Hey guys, it's your boy, Ballface8020, back again with another great commentary. First, let's have a delicious glass of milk, whole milk only. If you don't drink whole milk, you don't have, if you don't drink milk, that's fine. But if you drink anything less than whole milk, if you drink 2% or skim milk, you are banned for life from this channel. Oh wait, I didn't say what we were toasting to. We're toasting to the political execution of that traitor, Liz Cheney, uh, and loyalty to our king, Trump, forever. Um, yeah, this, this video I'm probably going to delete pretty quick because I think that really nobody's going to be interested. I'm just going to get it out here because it's something that I've been interested in for a long time, and I see so much misunderstanding of it that I really want to get, you know, just, you know, put put it out there to clear things up. Um, if you guys are, you know, follow the media at all, like even, even alternative media, you're hearing a lot now about inflation in the United States. I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world. You know, some people are even saying this is a return of the 70s and shit like that. I, in a previous now deleted political, had even said I thought that inflation was going to be one of the things to take down Biden. And, uh, you know, I, you know, I think when you look at the data, if you know what to look for, it's it's very clear that there is n not going to be big inflation coming down the road. Um, we, we are seeing. Uh, certainly in this past month, but in the past few months, large-scale consumer price inflation. That's true. Um, and it's gotten to a point where it's being like, you know, the Fed and is saying like, oh, it's all transitory and stuff. And that's being mocked, especially on places like Zero Hedge and stuff. But and yeah, the Fed sucks, but I think they're right. So I just want to talk a little bit about monetary policy. Um, it, what causes inflation? and why we shouldn't expect it in the United States. Um, so, I, you know, we'll start at the top. Um, I think the, um, the important thing to start with is that uh, the United States and every country, li literally every country in the world, except for maybe North Korea, I'm not sure, um, does not have a true fiat money system. Fiat mean fiat money means the money is not backed by uh, a tangible asset like uh, gold, silver, or land. Um, or you know, it, it could be anything, but it would be any any type that, like for instance, um, like back in the day when we had the gold standard, you could literally take your ten dollars to the Federal Reserve or the Treasurer, Treasury or whatever and exchange it for $10 worth of gold, however much that was. And um, you can't do that anymore because it's not, <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, we, we, it's just like, we, no, the money is worth $10 because we say it's worth $10 and that's it. But uh, actually, we do not have a true fiat money system. Uh, it's, under, it's, it's true that it's not backed by anything tangible, but it, it, what it's, instead it's backed by debt. It's based on debt. Money in our system can't just be printed. It has to be loaned into existence. So every dollar you see, it's not like the government just printed that dollar out and said, here's a dollar. That dollar exists because it was loaned, it was loaned into existence saying, okay, uh, here's this physical dollar. You owe us a dollar and 10 cents back. So there's always that, uh, that's how the money, you know, gets into circulation. Um, so the um with that being the case that means that if you want to predict inflation or see inflation all you have to do is look at the level of total debt in the United in the economy so like or in any given economy so we'll just look at the United States uh, that's what we're talking about here and um you'll see that that's really what inflation is because the, the debt comes first and then the physical currency comes second. So 
by the way, when I say total debt, I mean public sector. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, private sector, all private sector debt, um, all, uh, you know, state and state and local debt and all federal government debt. Um, when that when that total goes up, you're going to have you're going to have inflation. Um, it, when that total goes down, which is rare, um, it, went, it went down very slightly in 2009, but you will have price deflation. Won't always necessarily show up in um, in consumer prices in the short term, but I, uh, you know, that's a whole different subject. But that's really that's in the long run. That is what you're going to see. You know, inflation or deflation, depending on whether the total debt goes up or down. So with um, the start of um, with COVID and the stimulus after that, what you saw initially in early 2020, early last year, was an absolute explosion in total debt um, because there was programs like the Paycheck Protection Program, which allowed people like businesses to take out huge amounts of loans to pay their employees. And then you had the government directly taking on a lot of debt to play, pay unemployment benefits, stimulus, bailouts, all that other shit. Now, um, then there was more stimulus at the end of the year and still more stimulus at the beginning of this year. Um, so now in all of those things, all of the, that, that, that massive increase in debt, um, I mean, because normally before before COVID hit, total debt in the United States was increasing at a rate of about 4.5% a year. At the peak of COVID, it was increasing at a rate of something, I, I can't remember, I think it was something like 17%. So it was like huge. So you would have expected had that continued, you know, to see four times the normal inflation. So instead of inflation being 2% a year, you'd see 8% a year or something like that. Um, and you would have seen just that had it continued. However, we only maintained that 17% rate, whatever, for like three months. Um, total in 2020, inflation, I mean, not inflation, total debt only increased by about 10.5%. So basically, you know, like two point, basically two and a half times uh, what debt normally increased. So, you know, there really wasn't this big... Um, this big issue of new money being created. We'll talk a little bit about that down the road. The um, and uh, granted, you know, so and despite this, you didn't see really any very. You saw very low total inflation in 2020 because the uh, the recession, the COVID recession, was so deep. You didn't end up seeing a lot of total inflation. So, but um, really, but that's because all the inflation just got pushed forward until the economy reopened. And that is why you're seeing the big inflation now. Basically, what you're seeing now is actually the effects of the massive uh, debt increase in 2020, which is now over. I mean, yes, we're still increasing our debt a little bit more than we used to, but it's, it's, it's pretty, it's back to normal. It's close to back to normal now. So, you know, we, we have big inflation this month. Um, I think what, so it was something like 4%, over 4% year over year, although part of that was due to the base effects of last April. But the month over month was huge. It was the biggest since 1982. And um, you're going to see you're going to see high inflation again next month, probably, and maybe even into June. But after that, you know, that's kind of I think what you see is what you get, because Again, there hasn't been any sustained. I mean, I'm not saying the prices are going to go back down. They're going to stay where they are, but they're not. I don't think you're going to see much. There's no reason to expect inflation to continue if you look at the total debt. The um, it's just going to be uh, back to like you know two percent a year. Um, it's at uh, the two percent a year rate probably. I'm, eh, it might be a little bit higher because we are increasing a little bit more, and it should stay like that for the. Uh, Instead, I mean, until anything changes and, you know, I mean, and then we can talk about like um, the only thing, the only thing that would change it is either is if there is a lending boom in the private sector, which nobody's expecting, or if there's a big increase in the government running fiscal deficits. 
Um, and I don't think anybody's expecting that because if you see, you know, you've got the Republicans who don't want to spend money. And then you've got the Democrats who, who do want to spend money, but they also want to raise taxes to pay for it. And when you talk about inflation, government spending isn't really relevant. It's only government deficits that are going to add to the total debt in the economy. So if it's not adding total debt, it's not going to have any inflationary impact. Um, so, you know, I mean, people have been screaming about inflation since at least 2008, probably before that. A lot of these are people who have got an emotional attachment to gold or these days an emotional attachment to Bitcoin. Um, and what a lot of what they'll talk about is this quantitative easing stuff. And it took me a long time to understand what quantitative easing does or doesn't do, because on the surface, it looks like what quantitative easing is, is the Federal Reserve printing money and just giving it to banks and stuff. Um, but uh, that's not actually, I mean, it's that's technically true, but in practice, it doesn't really affect the money because the when the federal reserve does quantitative easing they'll purchase they'll purchase assets from the bank they'll they will literally print money and then purchase assets financial assets from the from the banks however there's this isn't money that the banks can do whatever they want with it's not like so it's not free money in that sense the banks take that cash and it might shore up their balance sheet because now they're showing cash on their balance sheets instead of some asset that wasn't worth shit however Due to the way that quantitative easing works, the banks cannot spend that money. They can, they have to hold it. They have to hold it on um, until they exchange it back, they exchange the assets back to the Federal Reserve. Now, that may be never. They may never give the assets back to the Federal Reserve. However, it doesn't matter. Basically, it doesn't matter how much money you print and give to the banks if the banks literally, by law, aren't allowed to spend it, lend it, do anything with it. All they can do is hold on to it. So quantitative easing really just makes no difference. With the exception of when it's going, when quantitative easing is being, uh, the money printing is actually being loaned to the government to fund its fiscal deficits. That will have an inflationary impact. However, the, you know, let's say for the sake of argument, that we get back to a stage where we're running deficits of $2 trillion a year. I don't think it's going to be that high. And that the Federal Reserve uh, pays for all of that $2 trillion deficit with quantitative easing. Well, that's not going to happen either. Um, but even if that happened, that would only be enough by itself to raise the total debt levels of the economy by around two and a half percent a year, which is two percent less than the four and a half percent of year that the uh, debt was increasing uh, pre-COVID anyway. So again, no real reasons out there to expect any uh, to expect any large scale inflation. And you know, yet what you need to understand is when you look at this stuff, um, the the U.S. and is a developed economy with an independent central bank. Uh, there has never been a case of a developed economy with an independent central bank having hyperinflation. It's never happened anywhere in the world ever. Um, and that doesn't mean it can't happen, but it does mean you need to be shy about predicting these types of things. If you think about in the United States, uh, using the United States example, there's been two very inflationary periods in U.S. history. One was the 1940s. The other was the 1970s. Um, in both of those cases, you need to look at the effects of going off the, the gold standard, which was naturally going to have, you know, an inflationary impact. But in the case of the in the case of the 1940s, you uh, the inflation was because you had sustained fiscal monetized fiscal deficits to pay for World War II from 1941 through 1945. So you essentially, in 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, five years of, of, um, of deficits that were on the level of what the U.S. did in 2020 to pay for COVID. 
Um, that's that's how extreme it was. So yeah, of course you were going to see inflation then, including and you still had the after effects of going off the gold standard, and then in the seventies uh, again going went off the gold standard in nineteen sixty nine. But again, you had you had big credit growth of you know ten percent ten percent plus credit growth a year. Credit death growth credit 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 and death growth or debt growth are the same thing. So again, you had high levels of uh of of debt growth and um which you know did go pretty. I mean, um, so you you did have inflation and um of course after the seventies. You continue to have the high debt growth, but instead of the inflation um, going into consumer products, it went into assets like real estate and stuff like that. Um, as banks got instead of banks kind of switched over from lending into the real economy and more into speculation, you know, real estate speculation, that's, which is kind of what you're seeing in places like China today. Although they have pretty bad consumer and price inflation too, but generally their inflation is actually is is kind of hidden because it's mostly in assets like you know like um and that's that's what happened to Japan too and speaking of Japan that's what you've seen you know the, the Japan you know everything that we've gone through economically Japan went through 30 years earlier and you know in Japan you had people saying like oh you know all these deficits all this quantitative easing we're going to have inflation and instead you've seen just stagnation and uh are often struggling with deflation over there now i don't think we're going to have deflation in the US our, our economy is a lot structured differently than Japan but uh i do think that you're going to see you're going to see um you know, just, you know, price stability, I think around the 2% a year. So I think that you'll see inflation will run like at the end of like, when we look back on 2021, you'll say the inflation was high, but I think it'll be pretty much back to normal in 22. So you heard it here first. That's all for now. And I'll see you in the next.